What's up guys and welcome back to SP Vids. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about audio interfaces. I've had a few questions about audio interfaces recently. Obviously I get quite a lot of questions through my channel and a lot of them seem to be around this topic at the moment. So I wanna cover this in a little bit of detail to give you guys a good understanding of what an audio interface is and what is a good audio interface for making beats, particularly with the SP series. So let's get straight into this one. Basically what an audio interface is and what it does is it allows you firstly to plug a variety variety of different music related instruments and devices into your computer for recording. So as you can see here on the front of this one, it's got the capability to take two XLR plugs at the same time, which is basically a standard microphone cable or connection. And also in the center of these, which you may not see or guess from looking at this, but that actually takes two three quarter inch jacks as well. So not only can you record microphone with this, you can also record instruments and hardware such as the SP or the MPC. So that's the first good use for one of these. So yeah, then inside the unit, what this is gonna do is it's got preamps inside here. Basically that's what you're paying most of the money for from what I can understand. These preamps will take the signal that you put in and give it a boost and a nice sort of tone to it as well. I think a lot of the time, companies will put analog preamps in here. So you get some nice analog processing through these preamps. So yeah, compared to your standard sound card on a computer, this is gonna do a much better job of receiving signals, boosting them and giving you a good level into your DAW or digital audio workstation. If you like recording a microphone, then this is pretty much almost essential to get one of these. You're not gonna have an XLR input on a standard computer sound card, so you are gonna to have to invest in one of these. I would also suggest this anyway for anyone that's getting serious about making beats and wants to record them to a computer. This is gonna give you the flexibility to do that with these inputs and this, the level boosting of the, uh, the signal coming in as well. What it can also do is, another example here, look, you've got the 48 volts on this one. So this has got phantom power in it and it only takes a USB connection on the back. It doesn't need any additional power than the USB. It powers from your computer. And then what it can do is send out 48 volt phantom power to a microphone that requires it. The one I'm using right now is a powered microphone. It needs power to it, it needs phantom power. So if I was using this audio interface, I would have to have this turned on. Otherwise I wouldn't get a signal at all from the, from the microphone. So again, if you want to have a nice clear sound like I have here and want to work a lot with vocals as well, if you've got a condenser microphone that requires power, you're going to have to make sure an audio interface that you buy can send power to the mic for you. Okay, around the back as well, I just want to quickly point out that an audio interface also means that you can hook up studio monitors as well. So I've got rockets and they go directly into these three quarter inch jack inputs at the back here, uh, inputs one and two. And that means that I can listen to whatever's coming out of my computer with my rocket speakers, which is cool if I'm listening to music or just watching YouTube videos, I can listen to the audio through my studio monitors. So that's another thing that this allows you to do very easily. You'll plug it in via USB and then you plug your studio monitors in and you can set it up to listen to anything coming from your computer through your studio monitors. So that's essentially what an audio interface does, I guess. It takes a signal in, it amplifies it and boosts it and gives you a good level into your computer and it allows you to listen to your audio through studio monitors as well. And it may occasionally have other features like I've just pointed out about the phantom power, which is super useful if you're working with vocals a lot. So yeah, I recommend these for anyone that's serious about making music at home. You pretty much have to have one of these in order to be able to record audio into your computer and get a decent level out of it. So just to point out that I'm not using this audio interface obviously for this video. What I've, I've had to actually decommission this one because it stopped working with me for some reason. It kept glitching when I was trying to record sound into my computer. Uh, I tried updating the drivers for it and it didn't make any difference. So unfortunately, it served me very, very well, this box. I think it lasted a good six or seven years, but it stopped working and I thought, to be honest, I think it might be because it's quite old. So bought a brand new one and I'm using it for this video to record these vocals. So I've got a Behringer Euphoria UMC204 HD and that does everything that I need it to do, both for recording the vocals for these videos and making beats in general as well. But we'll get onto that in the second half of the video. Basically, yeah, for this half of the video, I just wanted to show you guys what an audio interface is and what it does. 
And yeah, like I say, if you are serious about making music at home, it's definitely worth the investment for one of these. They only cost about 150 quid, and I think it would be the same in America. They're probably about 150 to 200 dollars. Definitely worth investing in if you're serious about making music at home, any kind of music as well. So we've covered that. We know why we need an audio interface now, but what should you look for if you're looking for one for making beats with? Well, the reason I've been able to use this old interface for this video is because it's exactly the same configuration as my new one as well. This is the configuration that I like to have. It's the two inputs on the front and then round the back, I love to have the phono option on the back as well. So my new audio interface has got exactly the same options on it. It's just a newer and different brand. But yeah, I love to have the two inputs on the front. What this means I can do is when I'm recording videos for a start, I can have my vocals and an SP going into one input. But also when I'm just recording from my hardware or from instruments, I can have two inputs going in at the same time and record those at the same time. Cool thing is as well in my digital audio workstation, I could either record one and two as like a blended track, a stereo track, both at the same time, or I could actually split those out if I wanted to and record one and two separately. So that gives you a bit more flexibility. And yeah, a lot of audio gear will have two outputs. So you wanna have two inputs on here as well to deal with each of those outputs. The MPC springs to mind as well. My 2000XL has got a dual output for recording on the back. I haven't got the eight outs. I've just got the standard dual, uh, the two outs on the recording. So yeah, I can go straight out the back of that and into this with one or two cables basically. So yeah, love to have the two inputs on the front and obviously can control the level of each one as well to make sure I get a nice even stereo mix when it's going into my computer. So let's move around the back. I absolutely 100% always want a phono output. Now this isn't something that always comes with an audio interface. So I would honestly have a look out for one that's definitely got this on the back. The reason why is because if you're an avid SP user, this is going to be absolutely perfect. All you'll need is a phono cable and then that means you can get any sound out of computer into your SP and record it. So samples, anything, well, literally anything at all. Whatever audio is coming out of your computer, you can just connect one cable from here into the back of your SP and then you're good to go. So I always make sure I get an interface that's got this on the back of it. Like I say, you've got your two outputs for your speakers here. That's pretty much commonplace on any audio interface that you'll buy. It always gives you the, this option to have these outputs. I imagine you can use these outputs to go into your SP as well. You're going to have to get a cable which is two three quarter inch jacks and then a phono cable at the other end, which is, I've got plenty of those here. They're definitely easy to get a hold of. But yeah, for recording out into my SP and into my MPC as well, I always go straight out of the phono and into the back of the devices. So yeah, that's the configuration I look for, guys. I like the two inputs on the front and the two out the back. That's pretty much everything. and. Also for me, yeah, I need the phantom power as well because I use microphones a lot. So I hope that clears up any questions that you might have had about an audio interface and which one to get if you're looking at getting into beat making. Like I've mentioned already, 100% recommend you get hold of one as soon as you can if you've got the money because it will make a massive difference to your workflow and make it a lot, lot easier to get sound to and from your devices. And yeah, if there is anything that I've missed, please feel free to add a comment below if there's anything important which you think I should have mentioned. Help the community out and just leave a little comment below and that will be really useful for everyone else as well. So that's it for this one, guys. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget you can support me in a number of different ways. If you head to spvids.com, you can pick up my beat packs. Got a new one coming out very soon as well, so stay tuned for that. And also you can become a member of the channel as well and contribute monthly, a very small amount. It's not very clear on mobile. I know a lot of you watch on mobile. There's no join button on mobile, but if you go into the description of my videos, you will see a link to become a member there if you're interested in doing that. Thank you to all my members that are members at the moment. I really, really do appreciate the support. So yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Keep making beats, and I'll be back very soon with more content. Peace!